and welcome to Community Church Online. If you're joining us for the first time, how exciting. We would love to send you a gift. Just text the word CONNECT to 571-209-5000. Fill out the form and our gift of thanks will be on the way. In just a moment, we're going to sing a few songs that I pray will strengthen and encourage your faith. Next, we'll hear a heartfelt and hope-filled message from our lead pastor, Charlie Whitlow. As he always says, we are a note-taking church. So if you're new with us, we encourage you to download our app to actively participate in the message by filling in the blanks of today's outline. If you write it down, chances are higher that you won't forget it when you need it most. You can find our app by searching Community Church Ashburn wherever you download your apps. One last thing, at any time during this service, or throughout the week, you can text the word CONNECT to our church phone number and someone from our HOPE team will be available to pray with you. Thanks again for being a part of our online family. I hope you enjoy the service. Every knee 
will bow before Him. And our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His love reigns and saves. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Come on, church, right where you are. Put your hands together. Come on, thanks for joining us for church online. We've got a great experience planned for you today, but I just want to take a moment and celebrate what God's been doing through this season. Last week, we had six people raise their hand through church online to receive Christ as their personal Lord and Savior and to take a next step in their faith journey. Come on, I said six people right where you are. Come on, I wanna hear someone get crazy, get loud. Come on, that's amazing. Heaven is rejoicing right now and we believe that the best days are still ahead. And so I wanna encourage you wherever you are, whatever you're watching on, get up, get ready to worship with us. Turn the volume up a little bit and just make a decision that you're not going to just watch, but you're going to participate throughout this service, and you're going to lean in, because we believe God has something he wants to speak to each and every one of us. So, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing right here, right now, in this moment. And we thank you for what we trust you will continue to do in the days to come. It's in your beautiful, powerful, awesome name we pray. And everyone said, amen. Come on, let's continue to worship, church. Join the one that never ends Because
because he lives because he lives hey before we begin thanks for tuning in we just want to share a couple of things of what's going on first of all next sunday is Mother's Day. Day. Are you ready? So listen, dads and all kids, I'm going to ask you a question. Have you got your gift picked out yet for mom? If you haven't done so already, listen, we have got you covered. We're excited. We have a stretch goal here. We want to bless 1,000, yes, you heard it, 1,000 moms with a special gift from us to them. So this Saturday, May 9th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., you can pick up your gift for a mom at our contact-free pickup station here at the Community Church. Now, how you reserve your gift is you text, listen to this carefully, guys, whoever you are, text mom to 571-209-5000. And get this, you can reserve up to four, four gifts. gifts. So come on. And also, honey, speaking of Mother's Day next Sunday, I'm going to be speaking, so I know you're excited you're about jacked. that. She's going to be I'm bringing the fire. About that, but also, you don't want to miss it. We're dropping a new music video just for you moms, so don't miss next week. Be sure to invite others to join our services um, at 9 30, 11, and 12 30. It's going to be really a, a neat thing. You don't want to miss so it. So, there's a new music video. Yep. If you miss it that Sunday, you miss it. Hey, Next Steps Fast Track is happening again in May. We've had such success in uh, April. We had 20 people complete on that one day and that Sunday. So Next Steps, it's four-step class that gives you an opportunity to learn more about our church. Better yet, it gives you an opportunity to leverage the incredible gift of the family of God. That's his church. So we've got another one coming up Sunday, May 30th. To sign up, just text the word NEXT to our church phone number, 571-209-5000. By the time COVID's over, I'm going to get tired of saying our church phone number. Babe, did you know that we have more people meeting in groups virtually than we had uh, that were coming together in person? It's just been overwhelming. Listen, real connection has never been more important than now. So listen, if you want to join one of our groups virtually just text the word group (laughs) again to our number 571-209-5000 and we'll get back with you with more information about our groups and also i don't know about you but we have four kids honey and they're so excited about our (laughs) see kids online experiences there's programming for all ages you can find access to these on facebook and instagram or through our church app Um, Also, you can text the word kids Kids to to our church phone number. We're not going to repeat it again. We're not. And we have our daily prayer that's happening Monday through Friday. Have you guys been tuning in? Join anytime. They've been so great Um, during the day on Facebook and Instagram. It's five minutes of hope, Hope, strength, strength. and clarity. You get to hear from different um, pastors and staff members, and it's just been so encouraging and uplifting. Woo! You know, our church has a mission to build a premier, world-renowned Christian school, and we're doing it. I mean, this is our long-term strategy as a church to change and improve our world, to bring a little heaven down to earth. And listen, we're so proud of this year's 18 seniors who've excelled even during these difficult times. Not only are they finishing this year strong, but have... They've been offered, honey, over $1.3 million in scholarships and completed a total of 249, not 248, 249 college credits. Come on, Virginia Academy. Listen, one day we see our students occupying seats of influence in every arena of life, including, look out, we're going to have one of our students on the Supreme Court. By the way, If you love our church and its mission, and you're working in education at some other institution, let me ask you, why? Seriously, you may want to consider joining an amazing team. If that's you, contact us. 
We're seeking to fill some pretty exciting positions for the 2020-21 school year. If you're interested, you can send us your resume at info at virginia-academy.com and someone from our team will contact you. Again, thanks to all those of you who faithfully give together. We are facilitating miracles. Hey, to partner with us anytime, set up regular giving, you can text the word GIVE. Get into our church phone number, 571-209-5000. And also, honey, um, help is just a text away. If at any time you want to pray or connect with someone from our team, text CONNECT to our church number. 571-209-5000. We need a little jingle so that everyone will remember. You know, let's just stop and pray before um, we hear our message this morning. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you are in control of every situation, God. And so we just give you the glory today and we welcome your presence into our homes and into our lives, Lord. And just let may this um, service just be a blessing to all those who watch. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, thanks again for tuning in wherever you are. I want to encourage you to get your, your Bible out and whatever you have to take notes. This is a note-taking church. You can find our notes on our app. And uh, before I get started, I want to encourage you to find uh, some bread, some juice, or some wine. At the end of my message, we're going to be celebrating communion together and remembering the Lord, okay? So you can just start to gather that stuff so you can be prepared uh, for that. I want to continue today's message uh, from where we left off last week. And you see that there in your note sheet for those taking notes, going to be getting into fill in the blanks, is how, how to recognize and accept the help of God. Again, how to recognize and accept the help of God. I want to ask two questions and then I'm going to give, I'm going to suggest three tips for recognizing and receiving the help of God. Two questions, three tips. Uh, let's begin the journey. Now, just in way of review, last week, this is, the, this is what we discovered last week. This is the undergirding truth. This is the, this is the summation. This is the message of Christianity. If you took the scriptures from Genesis all the way to Revelation, uh, if we could sum it up, here it is. This is just in review. Your first fill in a blank is that God is always passionately trying to help us. Did you get that? I mean, that undergirds everything. This is the foundational truth and message of Christianity. What is it again? God is always always passionately trying to help us. John 3, 17, the scripture says that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Or what that word saved means is help. Jesus did not come. God did not send his son to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Again, I want us to go back to the passage we looked at last week and I want you to see the passion, the emotion that, that just erupts out of Jesus, okay? We're going we're gonna to pick it up. This is the same passage we read last week. This is Luke 19, uh, 41. It says, as Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he, he what? Read the scriptures with me. He, he wept over it. And I just want us just to see that and remind you of the passion to the point of tears that Jesus had. He's approaching Jerusalem, and he begins to, to weep over Jerusalem. Now listen, you do not get worked up over something that you don't care anything about. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean here's Jesus, and, and he's worked up, and he breaks forth in emotion, and that shows that his, his passion and his great, his great care. I was, I was remembering that uh, several years back, in fact, I think it was last year, that I was in Intagacha, Tanzania. That's right. I bet you can't say that word. Intagacha, Tanzania. And we were there with the City of Hope. And many of you know that that's one of the, the great ministries that we support. In fact, we're supporting them right now in this, in this time. Hundreds of kids, 
orphans there and also the school there. And I was over there. And while I was over there, it was my daughter's 16th birthday. And we had planned to celebrate when I got home, but I had found a place where I got cell phone signal. And I pulled out and I started to text her. And I was like, darling, happy birthday. I'm sorry I can't be there today. Uh, I love you. The day you were born, your birth will always be remembered by me as one of the happiest days of my life. And you're smart. I just was texting, you're smart, you're intelligent, you're so much fun to be around with, you're, you're, you're hilarious, you're athletic, and, uh, and I just want you to know that I know there's been times that your dad's let you down, and as I'm typing, texting this, I begin to, to, to cry like a, like a little baby. I mean, I'm just, I can't even finish the text. I'm just weaving, and I'm trying to text, and people are looking at me, and I'm all embarrassed, you know, and I'm trying to, someone came in and said, what, what's wrong? I said, oh, nothing's wrong, and, and I'm texting. I said, you know, honey, there's been times that I, I've let you down, but I want to let you know that there's a heavenly father He'll never let you down. And I start crying again. And I, <laughs> I'm just touched with, the, with emotion from a 16-year-old girl that God had given to me. There's, there's a heavenly father, darling, that, that will never let you down. I, I hope that you'll always listen to his voice. He'll always steer you right. Even when me as your earthly father let you down, God never let you down. I just remember just being overcome with emotion. What's happening there? Well, what's happening there is I care about my daughter. And in the same way, when Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, he erupted with emotion. He began to weep over people there. Why? Because he cares for them. Wow. Now, likewise, think about Jesus. Jesus is the best. Wait, let's back up. He is the perfect representation of our heavenly Father and how he feels. So question number one, I said we're going to ask two questions. Question number one, why is Jesus so emotionally charged? Why is he so emotionally worked up? Now let's go back to the scripture, see if we can't discover why. It says, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, look at it, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days, let's keep going, the days will come upon you when your enemies will dash you to the ground, you and your children within your walls, they will not leave one stone on another, now read this next phrase with me, because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Now, in your notes, there's, there's a little side note here, um, I'm going to see if you can track. We're going to go deep dive a little bit here, but see if you can track with me. Jesus is, is coming to Jerusalem. He's a uh, very famous scene here. He's, he's riding on a donkey. One of the last times he's going to be coming to Jerusalem. He, and, and he's coming, and he begins to weep. And, and because the thing that is making for their peace is hidden from people's eyes. They don't recognize. Now, look at what the Scripture says. They do not recognize. Jesus says that God is coming to them. But wait a second, God's not coming to them. Jesus is coming to them. Hmm. Jesus is coming to Jerusalem, and he begins to weep because people don't really recognize what is really going on. Well, what's really going on? It's not just Jesus coming to them. It's God himself coming to them. So I want you to look at the side note there in your notes. This is a fill in the blank. Is Jesus identifies his coming with God's coming. I'll say it again. Jesus identifies. Now you have to wrestle with this. It's, it's, are you serious, Jesus? You think God's coming through you? Jesus equates his coming to people as if God himself were coming to people. In other words, it wasn't just Jesus coming to them, but God himself was coming to them through his son, and they didn't see it, and that's why he was so emotionally charged and worked up. So the answer there, why is Jesus so emotionally worked up? The answer I would suggest, suggest to you is because people didn't recognize, this is an important word, the moment. Come on, say that with me. The moment. People did not recognize the 
the moment that God was on the scene to help and to rescue, it was, it was hidden from their eyes. Okay, question number two. I want us to really think about that. That was question number one. Question number two is why, why do we tend to not recognize the moments? That's important, the moments. Why do we tend as people not to recognize the moments when God is trying to help us? Why, why can't we see it? Why so many times is it, is it hidden from our eyes when God is working on our behalf? May I suggest an answer to you? This, this is in your notes. It's, it's because it doesn't look like what we thought it would look like. Wow. Come on. Are you thinking with me? I mean, why, why can't we recognize this help? I'm going to suggest the reason is, is because it does not look like what we anticipated or what we expected. You know, the Scriptures are full, full of examples like this. I mean, just look at the life of Jesus. Uh, Jesus didn't look, look like what uh, everybody thought the Messiah would look like. He didn't fit. There it is. He didn't fit the preconceived picture of what the Savior was going to look like. He didn't wear the right clothes, didn't have the right message. His actions were different. Uh, the way he interpreted Scripture was different. Uh, just look at this one example in Matthew 16. Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he, he asked them a question. He said, who do people say that I am? And they began to talk and discuss. Finally, Peter spoke up and said, you know who you are? You are the Christ, or in other words, Messiah. You're the, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus was like, wow, that's great. Peter, guys, make sure you don't have to tell anybody that, but I want to teach you what it means to be the Christ, the Messiah. And then Jesus, the Scripture says, goes on to unpack what that means. He says, I'm going to suffer many things. I'm going to Jerusalem. The religious, religious leaders are going to arrest me, and they're going to, um, uh, I'm going to suffer, and they're going to reject me in, in my teachings and say all kind of false things against me, and then I'm going to give, they're going to take my life and kill me. And on the third day, I'm going to rise again. And there, Jesus is teaching this, and Peter's scratching his head. Finally, he interrupts Jesus says, are you serious? Lord, never. This will never happen to you. To which Jesus, I want you to Consider his words carefully, which Jesus says in Matthew 16, 23. He says, Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. Consider those words. You're a dangerous trap to me. Why are you a dangerous trap to me? Look what he says. You are seeing things merely from a human perspective, merely from a human point of view, and you're not seeing them from God's point of view. Why do we miss the help of God again? Let me say it again. Because it does not look like what we think or thought it should look like. You know, I was thinking of the story of Naaman. You can find this in 2 Kings chapter 5. Naaman, the second in command in Syria, only the king of Syria, and he's in charge of the army, well-respected, well-educated, um, well well-provided for, and he gets a skin disease. And the story goes on to say he's got this skin disease, and he's tried all kind of cures. He's gone to magicians. He's gone to the doctors. He's done everything he knows to do there in Syria. And finally, an Israelite slave girl comes to him and says, you know, there is a prophet of God from my hometown in Israel. His name is Elisha. And if if, if you go there, he can heal you. He said, wow. Well, he said, well, no, I'm not going to do that. But after a while, he began to think about it. And so sure enough, Naaman, the great commander of the Syrian army, uh, gets uh, jewels and, and clothes and rewards and gold and gifts, and he begins the journey down south to Israel. It takes several weeks, and he finally comes to uh, Elijah's house there, and uh, he asks around the village, and they say, that's the house of the prophet of God. And so the great respected Naaman comes up to the house, and uh, he's been waiting for this. He's heard about him. 
knocks on the door, and, he, and, he, and Elijah does not even, I'm sorry, excuse me, Elisha does not even come to the door. He sends his servant out and gives a message to Naaman. He said, the prophet of God tells you, Naaman, that if you'll go and dip in the Jordan seven times, your skin disease will be, your skin will become just like a little baby skin. You'll be healed. And do you know what the scripture says Naaman, said, Naaman did? Naaman became irate. Man, seriously? I've come all this journey. I've, I'm a respected person. Uh, uh, I'm esteemed and I brought rewards. And the prophet of God doesn't even come out to see me face to face. Look what he says. I want you to consider his words carefully. He says, I thought surely this prophet would have come out and waved his arms over me and cured me. We have plenty of rivers in Syria to bathe in. Better than this muddy Jordan River. How dare he tell me to bathe in a Jordan River? And the scripture says he got up and turned around and began his journey back home. I want you to look at his words carefully. I thought surely this prophet would have done this. Did you catch it? This is what he perceived. This is what he thought should happen. And when it didn't happen that way, he was going to miss out on the healing and the help of God because of our preconceived notions of how God is supposed to work. Now, thankfully, the story doesn't end there. One of his servants come to him and say, uh, Master, uh, uh, sir, uh, Master Naaman, listen, if the man of God had told you to do some great thing, you would have done it. But he's just told you to dip into the Jordan River. W why not try it? Now, to his everlasting credit, this is important. This is important in receiving the help of God. Naaman humbled himself. Humbled himself. Got off his donkey there, called all his, 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 his servants and ready to stop. And he went down to the Jordan River, and there he dipped himself seven times. And the scripture says, on the seventh time, just as the prophet said when he came up, he looked at his skin, and he was made whole. And he received, listen, he received the help of God. Why? Go back to the beginning of your note sheet, because it is God's passionate desire to always help if we can recognize his help in our, in our life. So, in your notes, I want you to read this. This is my concern. This is my, this is my fear. This is my worry. What is that, Pastor Charlie? Here it is, that many, you can read it with me if you'd like, that many of us are missing out on the tremendous, that's right, tremendous help strength and clarity of God. Why? All because it doesn't align with what we think it ought to be. Wow, there it is. God's here. God has shown up. Doesn't look like what we thought it would be, but it, nevertheless, he's here. Why? Because that's his desire and intent. And my cry is, oh Lord, my prayer is I don't want any person to miss out his incredible strength and help, clarity in their lives. So, well, Pastor Charlie, how, how, I don't want to miss out on his help. Well, let's keep going. There's some tips there in your notes. Tips for recognizing. It begins there, Lord. Help me to recognize. Tips for recognizing the help of God. You ready? Here we go. Number one, remember. Remember this. God's help rarely comes in the way we expect it to come. Come on. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to think. I'm asking you to engage. The, the first thing we have to remember is God's help most normally does not show up in the way that we thought he was going to show up. Now, because of this, but listen to me, because of this, we have to be extra careful. We have to be on guard of our preconceived ideas. What are you talking about, Pastor Charlie? I'm talking about our traditions. I'm talking about the way we have been brought up, I'm talking about our education. I'm even talking about our political affiliations. 
We can get caught up in all these things, and if we're not careful, they can close our mind. What are you talking about? They can close our eyes to seeing the help of God that he's wanting to get across in our lives because of our traditions, because of the way we were, we were brought up. I remember being here in the sanctuary, and after the service, I was standing there, and as I normally do, I come down off the stage and just there to meet people and pray for people and just greet people, and I saw this lady waiting uh, to come and speak to me. She was about three people back, and she was getting closer and closer, and I could tell on her face that she was not happy. And in my mind, I was thinking, oh, goodness, I wonder what she's going to tell me. She got closer. Her, her, her lips were pursed, and she's looking at me and just staring at me. And I said, how you doing? I just smiled. It's so good to have you. Who are you? She goes, what kind of place? This is what came out of her mouth. What kind of place? She's looking around. Is this? You call this a church? Where's the cross and the in the stained glass windows, I, I don't see any of this stuff. And I said, well, well, I'm sorry. We're, we are a church, and we love the Lord. It was good to have you. She says, well, I won't be back. And then I noticed who was standing just right next to her. This was an older lady, but right next to her was a, probably a 12, 13-year-old girl. And I said, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Who, who's this next to you? And she goes, that's my granddaughter. And she was, her granddaughter was the exact opposite of grandma. She was smiling. And I said, well, what did you think of the service? She said, I I loved it. Now, we have to be very careful right here. This is holy ground. Pastor Charlie, what do you mean holy ground? It's a special moment. Again, we have to be careful that the way we were brought up, the way we've been educated, our preconceived ideas... All these things, our political parties, all these things that are going on, we have to be careful, be aware of them, that they do not blind us to the very strength and the presence and the help of God. In fact, right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray that you do not see this broadcast as, oh, this is just, this is just Pastor Charlie coming over and giving us a nice talk. No, no, no. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray that you see it as if God himself is reaching out to you and wanting to to transform, beautify, strengthen, heal, and deliver you, take you from where you are to where you want to be in Jesus' name. Can you see his, can you recognize him reaching out to you right now? Come on. That's who he is. God is passionate about helping, saving, and rescuing us. Now, here's, here's the insight in your notes. And I want you to think about his help. And we're talking about that, uh, that it rarely comes the way we expect it. Now, here's the insight. His help is sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, but his His salvation, his help, his strength is sometimes the exact opposite (laughs) of what we thought it should be. In other words, take your preconceived idea of what you think God should do and flip it on its head. And that's probably where you're going to find the strength and the help of God coming uh, on the horizon for you, which leads us to number two. When you think about that, if it comes the exact opposite way than I thought you would, Lord, this doesn't look like what I thought. Look at number two, talking about tips for receiving the help of God. Number two is just to take a deep breath and patiently, you're going to love this. Thank you, Pastor Charlie, so much sharing this with us. Wait. Just wait. Wait. Look at what it says. Don't be too quick to pass judgment. What are you talking about? Don't be too quick to, to make a decision, to, to rush into a judgment to, on, on that person, on yourself, or even the circumstance that you find yourself in. Slow down. Listen to me. Somebody, some of us need to hear this today. Slow down and wait, wait. Don't be too quick to judge the matter. You may not know what God is up to yet. (laughs) 
Don't, don't rush into a judgment. Just hold on. God is always up to something good. Romans 8 and 28. <laughs> Do you remember that promise? He said all things. For those who love God, all things are working together for what? For good. So, whatever circumstance you find yourself in, just, 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 it, if it's a no, if it's a challenge, if it's a difficulty, whatever it is, just, just pause and keep your confidence, your trust in God. The scripture says it has profound reward. Do not throw away your confidence in the fact that God is working things out. All I have to do is keep my peace. I'm not called to figure everything out. I'm just going to wait, calmly keep my peace, and trust in the fact that God is working things out. Think about Joseph. Joseph being sold into slavery. Hmm. Seriously? And not only being sold into slavery, right after that, he's thrown into prison and accused of rape. And, and the whole time, you know, he's, he's holding on to this promise, keeping on to this promise of God. But you know the end of the story. None of those were the end of the story. Joseph being sold into slavery was not the end of the story. Joseph being thrown into prison was not the end of the story. God was working things out. If he had thrown in his confidence in God, who knows what would happen. But you know the story. Joseph ends up as prince of Egypt, being able to save the Israelites. God was working things out. How about Paul? Paul was thrown into prison. You know that great evangelist for Jesus? Going around sharing the good news, and the Romans pick him up, put him in prison, and we have that letter, Philippians, that he writes, and he says, and there's something incredible. He says, actually, this has turned out for good. I'm able now to witness to Roman soldiers and centurions and even to Caesar's household. Oh, thank you, Lord. What are you talking about, Pastor Charlie? I'm asking you, when, when we're thinking about recognizing the help of God, is when things do not, when things seem to be at its worst, don't pass the judgment too quick. Just hold on to your confidence in God and wait. Lord, you must be working things out, which brings us to number three. Third tip, finally, recognizing the help of God is just, I was going to say simply, but this is not simple is to stay humble. That's right. What is humility? Stay open. Stay open. Proud people rarely receive the help of God. You've got to stay humble. This is especially important for, I want to say us, religious people. Why? Because many of us, in fact, it's not just religious people, it's all of us. Um, we figure out a few things. Not everything, but we figure out a few things. And then uh, we make up our mind. There it is. When a mind is made up, it's usually closed. We figure out a few things and we make up our mind. And then we have this idea that um, this is how God works. And then we put God in that box. This is Him. The only problem with that is God cannot be put in a box. Just when we put him in, Lord, this is how it works. And he, he, why? Because he is God. So we, we stay humble, Lord, before you. Lord, what is this you're doing? Lord, I stay open to learning something new. Uh, new from, from you. Come on, let's, let's pray just right where you are, wherever you may be. Lord, I thank you for today. Lord, thank you for the message, the good news of Christ, that you are passionate. Lord, we looked at one passage where you wept. You're so passionate. I, I wish that people could 
wish they could recognize what God was doing on their behalf. But Lord, not only did you weep, you were so passionate, but you actually died for us. That's how passionate, Lord, you are for us. Lord, I pray for those listening right now that if there's one, just one, who's far from you, Lord, that they would sense your spirit and your presence drawing them back to you. And in fact, right now, if you have never accepted Christ or called on his name and you don't know what it is to be born again, I don't want to go any further in this broadcast without giving you an opportunity to call on him. He is our very present, not distant, he is our very present help in trouble, in our time of need. Come on, if that's you, I want you to pray with me. I'm going to lead you in prayer. and You just say the words after me. Dear Lord, I call on your name, Jesus. Will you save me? Help me. Heal me. Forgive me. Lord, I turn to you. Be my Savior and Lord. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Listen to me if you prayed that prayer. I want to encourage you to take one more step and you can always text the word CONNECT to our church phone number. We would love to reach out to you and partner with you in your new walk with God. Help, I promise you. If you prayed that prayer, anytime you call on his name, help is on the way. Let's take this moment right now and remember the Lord, can we? I want you to take the bread and the wine that you got together, the juice. If you're with your family, you can gather them around. Or if you're alone, just I thank you so much for being here. What is communion, Pastor Charlie? This is simply a time where we remember the Lord. Think about that. We're remembering just how much the Lord desires and how willing He is to help, to save, to give life. Jesus said, when you do this, remember me. So I'm just going to lead you right now. I want you to take the bread, if you would, and we're just going to remember the Lord right now. You take the bread and you can just hold it right there wherever you are. On the night our Lord was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Broken for you. Take it and eat it all. I want you to take the cup. Would you lift it just wherever you are right now? On the same night, the Lord took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. It's brand new. In my blood, which is shed for the remission. Listen, the complete remission, the washing away of our sins. The giving of life. Come on, I want to encourage you right now, wherever you are. We're not redeemed or helped with silver and gold. I can't buy my way into this. Lord, I just receive what you've done for me. Lord, we remember you. Lord, we remember that we have great help in you. This is a cup of blessing. And I pray right now that as you partake and drink, it's going to be a cup of blessing and life to you. In Jesus' name, take it and drink it all. You know, before we leave this moment, I'd love for us to say the Lord's Prayer together right where you are. The disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he said, okay, when you pray, pray like this. Come on, would you say it with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, oh, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth just as it is as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, all the power and the glory, forever and ever, world without end. All of us said, Amen. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. We're so pumped about next Sunday, Mother's Day. You don't want to miss it. And now may the Lord bless you. May He keep you. May He cause His good, His kind, His strengthening face to shine down upon you. And may He grant you rest. Some of the best rest you've ever had. And may He preserve you until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, what a great message. But let me ask you an important question. What are you going to do with what you just heard? I encourage you to take a next step, whatever next step that might be. If you want to make the decision to follow Christ today, or you'd like prayer for anything, our Hope Team is available. Just text the word CONNECT to 571-209-5000. What has always been does not have to always be in Jesus' name. We also want to thank those of you that are continuing to give. Because of you, we're able to make a huge impact locally and globally. To partner with us through giving, you can do so through our website, our app, or by texting the word GIVE to our church phone number. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Remember to invite, share, tag, do whatever you can do to share this message of hope with your friends and family. Love you, Community Church. See you next week.